فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد تفضل Narrated by Abi, narrated by Abi Huraira رضي الله عنه Narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه That the Prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said Fasting is a shield so the person observing fasting should avoid sexual relation with his wife and should not behave foolishly and impudently. And if somebody fights with him or abuses him, he should tell him twice, I am fasting. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asiyamu jannatun fala yarfuth wa la yaskhab, wa fi riwayati wa la yajhal. وَإِنِ امْرُؤٌ قَاتَلَهُ أَوْ شَاتَمَهُ فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمٌ مَرَّتَيْنِ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ This hadith, this we're on the 12th hadith, is مَا يَجِبُ عَلَى الصَّائِمِ تَرْكُهُ The person who is fasting, what is it upon him to leave off? What is it that you have to stay away from? Come close. What is it that is upon him to leave off? This hadith shows the thing that is needed from the person who is fasting and he has to safeguard, he has to protect, is stay from anything that can harm their fast or affect their fasting. And that is bitahalli to adorn yourself with good etiquettes. And stay away from the things that are wrong, immoral. So your fasting can produce correctly and you can come with fruitfulness. And based on that, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He promises us that if we do do that, or the Prophet tells us that forgiveness will be given to us. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala doesn't need from you to leave a food and drinking only, but Allah needs from you more than that. And we took hadith of the Prophet anyone who doesn't leave off false testimony, he's lying. His friend tells him something, his friend says something. And he goes, okay, you're my witness, right? That's what happened, right? And you weren't even there. You don't know if it's true or false. Rather, you even know it's a lie. You just go, yeah, 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 yeah it's true, yeah. To- t- false testimony. Well, jahla and ignorance. And we're going to take what ignorance means. It's what, it's what opposes forbearance. فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ Allah has no will. Allah does not want from you. أَنْ يَدَّعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ That you leave a food and drinking. Allah doesn't. This hadith specifically mentions a couple of things. Number one is, As-siyamu junnah, fasting is a shield. Junnah means shield. It's a shield. Ay yasturuka wa yaqika. It prevents and it veils you. Mimma taqafu that which you fear. What is it that it prevents you from and it protects you from sins? Sit properly and come forward. Minal ma'asi fi dunya, sins in this world. And it is also a shield, this is also a shield, the day of judgment from the hellfire. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, As-siyamu junnatun ka junnati ahadikum minal qitali. Fasting is a shield. Like the shield of one of you when you're fighting. Don't you have a shield when you're fighting? That shield, fasting is like that. And that shows you the virtue of fasting. Then the Prophet says, فَلَا يَرْفُثْ You can place a dhamma on the fat and you can also place a kasra on the fat. You can, both ways. وَالْرَفَثْ The word rafath is الْكَلَامُ الْفَاحِشِ it is the immoral speech. And it is also said that rafath means sexual intimacy. It's also said, especially in the verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 186. Sorry, Ayah 187. 
where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says uhilla lakum layla tassiyami rafathu ila nisaikum Allah says I have made permissible for you the night of fasting I have made permissible for you arrafathu ila nisaikum arrafath means what? intimacy with your wives so when you break your fast until fajr you're allowed to have intimacy with your family your wife but the majority of the scholars are of the opinion that asiyamu junnatun fala yarfuth here doesn't mean sexual intimacy but what it means is that al kalamur radi foul language no swearing you're not allowed to swear you're not allowed to use bad language and my beloved brothers and sisters one has to protect his tongue in ramadan especially and also outside ramadan the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man ma bayna lahayayhi wa ma bayna fakhidayhi adhmanu lahu al-jannah. Who can promise me what is between his two lips and that which is between his two thighs, I can assure him paradise. The poet, he said, Ihfad lisana ka ayyuhal insanu la yaldaghanna ka innahu thu'banu kam fil maqabiri min qatili lisanihi kana tahabu liqa'ahu shuj'anu. Protect your tongue. Many people have ended up in their graves and they got buried. Many people got killed, murdered, because of a tongue they didn't protect, from a speech they didn't watch. And due to it, they had a very severe consequences. So it's important that the person protects their tongue, especially in Ramadan. Especially what? In the month of Ramadan. Wala yashab. Yashab means don't raise your voice and don't shout. ولا يجهل and there's another riwayah that says ولا يجهل and don't be ignorant ولا يجهل and what it means is ولا يجهل don't come with that which opposes forbearance don't do an action from the actions of jahiliya the actions of the people of ignorance the disbelievers the criminals don't do actions that they do like using your Speech incorrectly. That's what it means. Rather, what happens is, if a person tries to fight with you, or he insults you, فليقول, you should say, Inni sa'imun, I am fasting twice. If somebody tries to insult you, and they try to pick a fight with you in the month of Ramadan, what do you say to them? Inni sa'im, I am a person who is fasting, I have no time. I have no time to fight with you. I am fasting. I don't want to indulge into that. And I am not going to become ignorant like you. I'm not going to do that. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says to us in the Quran, وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ Call to the good. وَأَعْرِضْ And turn away from وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Turn away from the ignorant ones. Call to the good. And turn away from the ignorant people. If you actually fight with an ignorant person, and if you indulge with the debate with an ignorant person, really you become ignorant as well. Imam Shafi'i, he said, Ma nadartu jahilan illa galabani. I have never debated with an ignorant person except he beat me. Adahu. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah fi. If somebody insults you, don't indulge with them. Look at the person you're talking to. If they're a wise person, the jahil, nothing is a response for him. So if he can't rationally, because he, if he can't rationally convince you, he wants to go physical with you. So the wise person gets his point across and he, and he leaves it out there and he turns away from it. Whether it gets accepted or not, he doesn't really look for that. No. So fasting, my beloved brothers and sisters, is madrasatun tarbawiya. Fasting is a month where what we take from it is a correct cultivation, tarbiya. It's a month of tarbiya. We're being mannered. We're picking up good habits. We're learning forbearance, enduring pain. And if people do things to us, we're learning to restrict, restrain ourselves and hold ourselves back. That's what we're learning fasting. We're learning patience. That we, we're also learning sidq, truthfulness, and that we don't lie. And that all comes if the person text, protects their tongue. And it calls you to have good etiquettes, makarim al-akhlaq, good manners, and good etiquettes in your speech, in your actions. So my beloved brothers and sisters, keep in mind that fasting 
it is the greatest opportunity that comes in your life. You know the previous nations, how long would they live for? They would live for a very long time. It was said that Nuh alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salatu salam came to a woman. She was on her grave and she was crying. And she said, I lost my little child. He said, how, how, how young was it when he died? She said, 500 years. She lost a child at the five, age of 500 years. And that to her was a baby boy, baby kid. We don't have that now. So you can imagine the good action a person can do in 500 years. Sahih? We don't have that. But Allah gave us a month. And he gave us within that month a night. خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٌ Greater than a thousand months. So if you get hold of that one night, that's how much years did you get? 800 and, uh, sorry, 83 years, right? Approximately, something like that. You may not live for that long. Imagine you get that twi twice in your life. So you're getting a lot by just Laylatul Qadr. خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٌ A thousand years of you praying and fasting. That night is equivalent to it. صح? It's the best blessing from Allah. So then Ramadan is an opportunity for a person to become a righteous individual. Naam. Narrated by, narrated by Abu Murayrata radiallahu anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Had I not thought it difficult for my ummah, I would have commanded them to use the miswak before every salah. In the narration of Bukhari, narrated Mu'allakan, said, after, uh, before every wudu. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لولا أن أشق على أمتي لا أمرتم بالسواك عند كل صلاة متفق عليه وللبخاري تعليقا مع كل وضوء. This hadith shows مشروعية السواك للصائم. This hadith talks about the permissibility. Of using the miswak whilst you're fasting. You're allowed to. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he says in the hadith, Lawla an ashukka ala ummati, if I didn't believe that it was hard for my ummah, la amartuhum, I would have commanded them bisiwak in the kulli salah. Every prayer, I would have told them to use the miswak. And another riwayah, Bukhari brought it mu'allakan. When Bukhari brings it mu'allaka, laysa min shartihi, it's not from his conditions. But we find this hadith which Bukhari brought it Mu'allaq and that is when Bukhari doesn't mention his teacher. So he brings a chain which is disconnected. Bukhari does that. He brings it without his teacher. What we can do then, we research it elsewhere if we can find this chain of narration actually connected. And we do find it. We find it in Imam al-Nasai, he brings it in his Sunan. Ibn Khuzayma brings it in his Sahih. Both of them, they bring it to Mawsul. They bring it connected. So it's found connected and it is authentic. It is what? Authentic. What is that? What is it? Ma'a kulli wudu'in with every wudu. That wording is just what's mu'allaq. Not the whole narration. Just ma'a kulli wudu'in. This hadith shows us that the miswaq, using it, is a thing that is recommended. Highly recommended. It's not obligatory, but it's recommended. And that the person should use it. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in a hadith Imam al nasai and Ahmed and others narrated on the authority of Aisha that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that the siwak is a purity for the mouth. It purifies your mouth. And it pleases Allah. Allah is pleased with the usage of the miswak. Allah loves it subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's what? He's pleased with it subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this hadith, pay attention here. We're trying to take a fiqh out of it, which is it says, لَأَمَرْتُهُمْ بِالسِّوَاكِ عِنْدَ كُلِّ صَلَةِ Right? I would have commanded them to use the miswak for every salah, right? When we have the word kul, all, does Ramadan fall under that? Of course it does. Ramadan falls under that. If the Prophet ﷺ unrestrictedly said to use the miswak for every prayer and every wudu, the word kul is said to be, it is the greatest letter that's used for umum generalization the word kul and jami' and all of them those are powerful it's like everything everything are you with me brothers 
So now we find the Prophet says, is saying, I would have commanded them to use the miswak for every prayer or every wudu based on the other riwayah of Bukhari Mu'allakan. So this is Ammun, it's general. Yashmalul Fitra, it falls, what falls under it is when you're not fasting, and it all, what falls under it is when you're fasting, both. And we also don't find وَلَيْسَ لِهَذَا الْعُمُومِ مُخَصِّصٌ صَحِيحٌ And we don't have any other narration that specifies, takes Ramadan as an exception and says when you're fasting, you're not allowed to use miswak. We don't have narration that says that. And since there is no narration like that, that means you are allowed to use the miswak whilst you're fasting. So this is now a response to Madhab al-Shafi'iyah who say about the zawal after the zenith, zenith meaning dhuhr, you're not allowed to use the what? The miswak. They say before that you can, but not after. Some say you can't even use it whilst you're fasting at all. The reason is because they say, La khulufu fami sa'imi atibu indallahi min rihil misk, right? We took it before. That the, the odor that comes out of the smell that comes out of the, the mouth of the one who is fasting is more beloved to Allah than the mas- misk. So they say if you do miswak, you get rid of that smell, and Allah loves that smell. But we said that that means the day of judgment on this world. It's the day of judgment, not this world. So now we're going to take some of the statements of the ulama regarding this particular issue. And Imam Ibn al-Arabi, rahimahullah, he has a sharah, uh, which he called it Aridatul Ahwadi. And he says in his kitab, Qala ulama ula, our scholars said, Lam yasihha fi siwaki al-sa'imi hadithu nafiyan wa la ithbata. He says, it hasn't come from our scholars. Our scholars said, he said, he said, our scholars said, it hasn't tra- been authentically transmitted. In the matter of the siwak, a hadith whatsoever that either negates nor affirms there's no narration that says that you can't use the miswak whilst you're fasting. And there is also not a narration that says you can use miswak whilst you're fasting. There isn't. So we don't have any of the two. We don't have no negation regarding it. And we don't have affirmation regarding it. Illa except. And then Nabiya Havda alayhi inda kulli wudu. Except the fact that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he urged the companions to use the miswak every wudu that they're doing. Wa kulli salah. And every prayer mutlaqan unrestrictedly. So pay attention here. He says to you, we don't have any narration authentically transmitted. Okay? There's no authentically transmitted narration that says whilst you're fasting, you're allowed to use miswak. Or you're not allowed to use miswak. There isn't. But the only thing we have is general narrations. Where the messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, urges his companions to use the miswak for every prayer or every wudu. And the Prophet urged us to use the miswak on a Friday. Are you with me? وَلَمْ يُفَرِّقْ And because the Prophet did not distinguish at that particular moment بَيْنَ صَائِمٍ The one who's fasting وَغَيْرِهِ And the one who's not fasting وَقَدْ قَدِمْنَا فَوَائِدَ الْعَشَرَةِ فِي الطَّهَارَةِ وَالصَّوْمِ حَقُّ بِهَا Since the Prophet didn't distinguish between the two and didn't say, oh, you can use the miswak for every wudu except Ramadan. When Ramadan comes and you're fasting, you shouldn't. Are you with me? Since the Prophet didn't do that, we take it unrestrictedly and it means and it involves what? Every single time within the year, unrestrictedly said. Also, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah in his Majmu' al Fatawa, the 25th volume, page 266, Ibn Taymiyyah says, Ibn Taymiyyah says, there has never, there has not come. There has not come a narration that mentions it's disliked for the siwak to be the siwak to be used after the zenith. There isn't, and there's also no narrations that specifies yuhasisu that specifies umumati nusus siwaki that specify the general evidences that the Prophet allowed the miswak to be used, there's no narration that specifies it. So what we take from that is 
the people who said that you can't use the misraq whilst you're fasting, they're incorrect. They are what? They're incorrect. And their argument is not strong. وَلِذَلِكَ عَبْدُ Rahman ibn Ghanamin Abdul Rahman ibn Ghanamin He said سَأَلْتُ مُعَاذَ بْنَ جَبَلٍ سألت, I asked Mu'adh ibn Jabal The noble companion Mu'adh ibn Jabal I asked him أَتَسَوَّكُ وَأَنَا صَائِمٌ Shall I use my miswak whilst I am fasting? قَالَ نَعَمْ He said to me yes قُلْتُ أَيُّ النَّهَار Daytime He said to me غُدْوَةً أو عَشِيَةً Morning or night, it doesn't matter. قلت, I said to him, إِنَّ النَّاسِ يَكْرَهُونَ عَشِيَةً The people don't like it in the morning. The people don't like it. Then Mu'adh uh, ibn Jabal said to him, إِنَّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ Because the person said to him, they people respond by saying, لَخُلُوفُ فَمِ الصَّائِمِ أَطِبُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ رِيحِ الْمِسْكِ They use this argument and they bring it forward. That the smell of the one who is fasting is more beloved to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala than the, the misk. Mu'ad responded, Subhanallah, laqad amarahum bisiwaki wa ma kana billadhi ya'muruhum. The Prophet commanded them to use the miswak. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, he commanded them. You can find that by Imam al-Tabarani in his Mu'jam al-Kabir. In the Senate is a man by the name of Bakr ibn Khurayshin. Some scholars or a lot of the scholars they weaken him. Even that though Yahya ibn Ma'in wa taqahu Yahya ibn Ma'in he classified him as to be a reliable person. Naam. Narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said if one has a sudden attack of vomiting while one is fasting, no atonement is required of him. But if he vomits intentionally, he must make atonement. The usage of the word atonement sounds like the Christ or Christianity, sah? Huh? It does, right? An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu qal qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man dara'ahu al-qay'u falaysa alayhi qada'u wa man istaqa'a falyaqdi Rawahu Abu Dawood wa Tirmidhi wa Ibn Majah wa Ahmad wa rawatuhu Thiqat Thiqat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu in this hadith so this hadith talks about athari al-qay the effects that vomiting has on the person who is fasting if you're fasting and you vomit you're either one of two situations you either vomited unintentionally you there was food and you just it came out it came out and like you felt sick, so you vomited. And if that's the case, then there's not, nothing upon you. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man anyone who the vomiting overcomes him and he vomits, فَلَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ قَضَاءٌ You don't have to bring it back. There's no bringing back of that fasting. If you vomit everything out. وَمَنِ اسْتَسْقَى وَمَنِ اسْتَقَاءَ Sorry. وَمَنِ اسْتَقَاءَ And anyone who brings the vomit out deliberately. There are some people who love to vomit. They like to do that. I don't know why. They want to eat, but they want to let it out. I think they're trying to become uh, skinny. They want to be skinny. صح? If you do that and you put a finger in your mouth and you do that to yourself and it comes out, فَلْيَقْضِ upon you to bring that fast back. You have to bring that fast back. And that's the view of the jumhur of the ulama, the overwhelming majority of the scholars. And Imam al-Khatabi rahimahullah, in his ma'alim al-sunan, he says, لا أعلم بين أهل العلم في اختلافا I don't know amongst the scholars any difference of opinion on this. And that's not the case. There are some who go against it. There are some. Ibn Qudama rahimahullah, he says in his mughni, he said, هذا قول عامة أهل العلم This is the view of the majority of the scholars. This is what he says. So this is the view of the... What about if what comes out of you is food, if you're vomiting out food or if you're vomiting out other than food? Is there a difference between it? 
ابن قدامة سيس فلا فرق بين كون القيء طعاما أو مرارا أو بلغا أو بلغما أو دما أو غيره لأن الجميع داخل تحت عموم الحديث والله تعالى أعلم بالصواب whatever it is that comes out from you it doesn't matter it's the same so the ruling is out whether you bring food out whether you bring juice or fruits out whatever, whatever comes out of you whether blood comes out uh, whatever comes out from you there is no farq according to this قول and that's true that's correct نعم doesn't change anything the quantity and what comes out doesn't change doesn't Yes, you, you you have to carry on, unless you've become sick from it, right? Unless you're vomiting because you're sick, and you're not able to carry on the fasting because you're sick, then this is a person who is sick, so. But if you're not sick, you vomited because something you something went in your mouth, or you know you're drinking something and something was in there, and sometimes you know you're fasting, you should be drinking. But I don't know, it's, it, air went in your mouth, whatever. Huh? And you felt like you wanted to vomit or if that does happen to you and you do vomit unintentionally if you if there's nothing wrong with you you carry your fasting you have to carry your fasting um what's the wisdom in why what's the wisdom fi bayani al hikma what's the wisdom fi kawli yuftiru what is the wisdom in the fact that his fasting breaks by the vomiting. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions the wisdom. He says, Qannuhu yas sa'imu an akhli ma yuqawihi wa yugadhihi min at ta'ami wa sharabi, fa yunha an ikhraji ma yudrifuhu wa yukhriju ma datahu lati biha yatagadha, wa illa fa ila mukina min hada, darrahu wa kana mutaadjan fi ibadatihi la adilan. As you all know, the Sharia came to be fair and just, right? Why else you're fasting? Are you allowed to inject yourself with things that would make you give you energy? You're not allowed to. Are you allowed to eat whilst you're fasting? Why is it because you're not allowed to have energy, any any energy in you? Are you with me? As much as the Sharia doesn't want you, Shaykh Al Islam Taymiyyah is saying, as much as the Sharia doesn't want you to take anything else to make yourself strong, and the Sharia wants you to 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 endure and to learn forbearance, it doesn't also want you to harm yourself and to take away from yourself what you need. So it doesn't want you to go short and harm yourself and it doesn't also want you to take benefits and just go on. It wants justice. The Sharia comes to be fair. So you're not allowed to take from the energy that's within you and you're not also allowed to add anything onto it. Allah is just in his rulings. Fair and just. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is not permissible for the person to do that to themselves. نعم no.